Hi, this is Vicky with Condi Systems. Going to show you how to make a clock face out of Corel Draw. And as you can see, I have a a perfect uh, circle here on the page. It's about eight inches. Actually, it's eight point one two five. If you click on it, you'll see eight point one two five for bleed. And most of our clock faces, or a lot of the clock faces we sell here, are eight inch, like an eight inch disc. Um, so it's perfectly circled as you can see I've made some measurements pulling my little line bars down from my scale here from 0 to 8 and again from 0 to 8. I've uh, centered crosshairs here in the middle 4 inches in length and width so that I'm perfectly centered in the center of my disc. Now what I want to do is create another circle so I know where to put my numbers. I'm going to delete this circle later and you know you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to but this is the way I can tell if my numbers are lined up perfectly. The circle that I create here is going to be the length of my second hand. Um, so if you think of it as the hour hand, minute hand, and second hand, the second hand for me, uh, and you can do this however you want, but uh, the second hand will usually um, cover the length of the number as it goes around the clock face uh, clockwise. And um, so I want to make my circle long enough or big enough so that when the second hand's moving, it's moving across the numbers um, at the same distance. And the way I go to do about doing that is measure my second hand from where the post will sit in the center all the way out. and um, this measurement's about three, uh, five and a half inches. So I'm going to go up here and change this to a five. And I'm going to change this one to a five. And uh, just press enter and make sure it's centered here. If, um, if it's not centered, you just take the, uh, the little crosshairs here and center it. As you can see, you've got a center in blue here to the right letting you know that you are centered on the crosshairs. And um, there's another way to do it and that's up here in your uh, arrange and align and distribute where you can select both objects, both circles, and then uh, align to center. Okay, align centers um, here in your align and distribute. That's the second way you can do it. But I feel confident that my circles are centered and I'm going to proceed to make my numbers. Now, the way you select your numbers, of course, is over. You have to click on your um, text toolbar or your text over here where your toolbar is. And then uh, choose some sort of numbers. I'm going to choose Old English Gothic. And uh, I'm going to make mine about 72 points. And what I'm going to do is go up here and start typing my numbers individually so that I can place them individually. I'm going to start off with a 12, a 3, a 6, and a 9. And then I'm going to come back and uh, show you how to do the rest. So I'm going to go make my numbers. And as you can see I've made my numbers up here at 72 points using the old uh, uh, English Gothic. I'm going to click on the 12 and place it just above the circle here that I will delete later. That's just my little tool I'm using for knowing where to place my numbers. And of course I know that I have to place them on these uh, lines that are perfectly centered here in the uh, clock face. Put the 6 down here. And you, and you can scroll this in later, zoom in on it and get it more perfect, which, um, which I'm going to do here in a second as you can see. Uh, just using my mouse wheel I can uh, click on my document and roll in to get a uh, zoomed view of making sure that my numbers are perfectly lined up where I want them. And again, uh, you want to be close to, whoops, make sure you don't grab the circle. You want to be close to perfect, but uh, if you're not perfect, it's okay. Um, it's not really um, going to be that noticeable, but you do want to try to get it as best you can. Um, oops, I'm sorry. We need to go out here as best you can um, in those uh, in those right places. So there we go. We've got 12, 3, 6, and 9. 
and now I'm going to proceed on to show you how to uh, place your other numbers in um, equally distanced apart here. So just stand by, we'll get to that. I'm going to show you how to make measurements for that also. Okay, uh, I've already made two lines here that are equally distributed horizontally across the page. I'm going to show you how to make the other two lines. I'm going to pull from my top scale and I've already measured out how much distance I need apart so that I can equally dis uh, distribute the lines across the page and place my numbers in. So I'm just going to pull a line from the top scale by left clicking in the scale itself and coming down to uh, make my lines about five and a quarter here and then six and a half and to make it perfect whoops control Z that to get it perfectly uh, lined up like again you can scroll in uh, to get it more perfectly lined up if you want um, it's up to you if you just use your mouse key and scroll in I uh, you can get these lines perfect okay and scroll back out and now I have lines that are uh, horizontally across the page that'll help me determine where my numbers are going to go in behind this circle okay so now I want to go finish making my numbers so that I can place these and if you, if you want if you want to be even more perfect um, you can uh, create lines vertically across the page too just by pulling these out and then deciding where your um, where your numbers need to go it's up to you but I think I have enough lines here that will um, that will do the trick if you have a line too many just right click and delete it alright so I'm gonna go make my numbers and uh, show you how to place them into the circle Okay, I finished creating all my numbers and now I'm ready to place them uh, behind the circle using the lines I've provided in the uh, in the graphic. So make sure you're on your um, pick tool here at the top over at your tools and then um, grab your one and just come down and place it kind of centering it on that line and we'll zoom in here in a second and get it more perfect and there's the two and uh, we're going to go with a four. And then the five. And the seven. And the eight. And the ten. And the eleven. and I'll just use my mouse wheel kind of roll in start grabbing these numbers and lining them up a little more perfectly and it's a fun little task again um, you know once you get your numbers on the page you can um, uh, group everything here and then use this as a template for yourself um, create different numbers uh, you've already got a template you can just replace these numbers with other numbers um, and it's a fun little task because uh, you've done it yourself and you've got to pick your numbers we do have templates online if you go to clock face um, you'll get all kinds of uh, clock faces that I've already made to put up um, for your convenience if you uh, prefer just to use one of the ones that are already made that's fine or send, send an email to support at condi.com and we can uh, email you the clock faces again uh, now what I'm ready to do is click outside to uh, ungroup or unbox my, my my digits so that I can delete this line I'm ready to get rid of this circle here that was just a, a guideline for me to put these numbers in and I feel like now I've equally um, distanced these numbers uh, across the inside of my clock face my disk and I'm ready to um, delete this and put an image in there if I want but I've got a clock face that I can use 
and uh, assemble. And I certainly hope that I've helped in some way. I get a lot of questions on clock faces and people who want to know how to put the numbers in there. And I felt this, uh, this video would be good for helping those who wanted that information. Again, my name is Vicki. I'm with Condi Systems. If you have any questions on how to do this, I'm happy to answer those questions. And uh, stay tuned for more videos coming up from Condi TV. If there's any videos that you can think of you would like us to do, send an email to support at Condi.com and we'll certainly uh, uh, put it in the video box of things to, to do here. We're always looking for good videos that will be helpful to our clients. Thank you for your time.